Okay. So what we did said was the geodesic equation is given by Tx d2xi by d square plus gamma i uh, j k dxj by ds dxk by ds is equal to 0. And we had said that gamma i j k is equal to half g i a g a j comma k plus g a k comma j minus g j k comma a. All right. This is the expression for gamma which we had derived. Yeah. Okay. And then we said that let us have uh, consider uh, consider small perturbation from eta ij. So I have g i j is equal to eta i j plus h i j where h i j is much less than 1 which is small. And uh, since these uh, constant components we have gamma i j k is equal to half uh, eta Ia plus Hia multiplied by Hajk plus Hakj minus Hkja. Jk or Kj doesn't matter for G and H because they are symmetric tensors. And these are all second order. So neglect. And so I have up to first order in perturbation, we have gamma i j k is equal to half eta i a h a j k plus h a k j minus h k j a. All right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now we are interested with Newtonian dynamics. We are interested in uh, I equal to 1, 2, 3, the spatial portion. So, so, and then that is, we will denote it by alpha, Greek symbol. So, I will have D2x alpha by D2x alpha by D square plus gamma alpha jk dx alpha ds dx sorry j ds dx k ds equal to 0. Okay. And now we need to substitute gamma and, and uh, evaluate things up to first order in h. Okay. Now, I can always write it as I will multiply it by ds square by dt square. And that gives me 
d2 x alpha by dt square. This is the Newtonian acceleration plus gamma alpha jk dxj by dt dxk by dt equal to 0. Okay. And now let us write all the components. d2 x alpha by dt square plus gamma alpha I will first evaluate. Okay. So I will evaluate. Okay. So this will be 0, 0. Dx 0 by dt will be 1. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this and uh, this plus gamma alpha 0 beta dx0 by dt, which is 1, into dx beta by dt, plus gamma alpha delta 0, dx delta by dt equal to 0. All right. And so beta and delta are just dummy indices. So it is d2x alpha by dt square plus gamma alpha 0, 0 plus 2. See, this is symmetric. Gamma is symmetric. Okay, in these two. And delta, delta and beta, beta dummy indices. So I can write it as 2 gamma alpha 0 beta dx beta by dt equal to 0. Okay? Yes. Okay, no, now I'll simplify it further. Now we are going to evaluate these objects for this case. So I have gamma alpha 0, 0 is equal to half eta i alpha h a 0 comma 0 plus h a 0 comma 0 plus, okay, minus h 0, 0 comma wait it shouldn't be i yeah. alpha a okay right i is replaced by alpha the uh, the special portions mm. is it all right yes okay and now explicitly writing the summation sign, this is equal to half summation. Now, eta alpha A is just minus delta alpha A. Right? Are you with me? See, eta alpha a will be minus 1 along the diagonal, right? And 0 otherwise. Yeah. Okay. This into twice h a 0 comma 0 minus h 0 0 comma a. And summation over a is equal to 0 to 3. Clearly, since this is alpha is spatial, only a equal, a equal to 0 will contribute this as 0. So this is equal to half summation alpha equal to 1 to 3 minus 
Now, delta alpha A, what I will do is, so it will only contribute an alpha equal to A. So this will be 2H alpha 0, 0 minus H 0, 0, alpha. Is it okay? Yes. This is equal to summation alpha equal to 1. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I mean, I get the result, but I mean, this thing was wrong. See, let's just go, go back. So this will contribute for a given alpha, it will contribute only when A equal to alpha. Right? Because yes. eta alpha is a, but there will be a minus sign. So there won't be any summation. There will be a minus. All the others will be 0. When For a given alpha, A equal to alpha will contribute. So that will be 1 minus 1. H 2H alpha 0, 0 minus H 0, 0, alpha. There is no summation. All right? Yeah. Okay. Fine. So now let us just, so I have gamma alpha 0, 0 is equal to minus H alpha 0, 0 plus H 0, 0, alpha. Now let us keep this result. Then we will have gamma alpha 0 beta dx beta by dt. Now, gamma alpha 0 beta is equal to half eta alpha A H A 0 comma beta plus H A beta comma 0 minus H 0 beta comma A. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Zero alpha comma so zero beta comma alpha. H need not be symmetric, right? H will be symmetric. H is symmetric. Yeah, that is because eta is symmetric, G is symmetric, so H has to be symmetric. Oh yeah, I got. It. Okay. And uh, okay. Mm hmm. So I have alpha zero. This will go. Okay, let us see. So, uh, so these are the ones which are remaining. Here I have done a mistake. I need a half. Okay, now let us see. Alpha beta, okay. And so now I have d2x alpha by dt square plus the gamma alpha zero minus h alpha zero comma zero plus H 0, 0, comma alpha, which is the first term. And then 
Okay, so I'll just maintain the colors. Okay. And so I have this plus two hmm, plus two and there's the minus sign here. So it will be minus the two and a half will cancel. Minus sign will remain. Is that okay? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Then it's okay. So now I will distinct, I will have these two, three kind of terms. Plus half H zero zero comma alpha. Mm -hmm. and uh, 0, 0, comma alpha minus h alpha 0, comma 0 minus h alpha beta, comma 0. Okay, I have combined this and this and then minus H alpha zero comma beta plus H beta zero comma alpha. I mean, because it is symmetric. This is dx beta by dt, dx beta by dt equal to zero. So this is a geodesic equation. Next, I invoke the following. What I say is that any change, see, now what I'm looking for is Newtonian limit. In Newtonian limit, there is no time information. Newtonian law of gravity is in a static time. You're right. It is just acceleration equal to GMM by R square. So uh, if, a if a gravitating object is present at a point, its field at any distant object will be instantaneous. It doesn't take speed of infinite speed of uh, speed of light. Is you do you understand this? Yes. Now, since it's infinite speed of light, it means that any time dependence of g alpha of any of h a b can be neglected because it is instantaneous. See the so the time taken is zero. So in other words, if a time taken for a signal to from go from to see, if suppose there is a change in A and I need a change in B, the change in A will propagate to change in B. So at a given time, A and B can be different and they can vary with time. Are you with me? Yes. Now, if suppose, so it means that at two different points, you can have, I mean, so basically it means that any function del by del t if I have, okay, if suppose the signal travels at infinite speed, it means when there is a change at one point, that change gets communicated instantaneously to any other point. It means that the, that the difference in these two points is independent of time. You, yeah. Okay. So it is like this. Suppose I have a rod. Okay. And I take the rod and bend it like this. Now, depending on the Young's modulus, this wave will propagate and go like this with time. Right? Yeah. Now, how fast it propagates 
depends on Young's modulus and the speed of this wave. If the speed of wave is infinity, then this will go from here to here instantaneously. In zero times. Yes. Mm -hmm. It means that there is no, the partial derivative with respect to time will be zero. Yes. So, if you say that the speed of light is infinity, then all the time dependence can be equated to zero. There is no, the, all the partial derivative with respect to time can be integrated, can be equated to zero. Because I mean, because signal is going at an infinite speed, so there is no change from one point to another at a given time. So it means that since speed of propagation C tends to infinity in Newtonian limit, we have del by del t equal to zero. Okay. Hence, this quantity, this quantity will be zero. Since the uh, dx beta by dt, I think it's not there for h alpha zero comma zero. Why? What is it? Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. No, just a minute. Ah. No, I mean, it is here, no? No, but oh, that term comes from the expansion of gamma zero zero alpha, right? Zero zero? I mean, zero alpha zero. You mean this one? Is this what you're asking? No, zero alpha zero. Zero alpha zero. <laughs> okay, in that yeah. alpha zero. No, um, do you know why this is not there? No, that I understood. Like, but then she was asking about dx beta by you know dt yeah, not the, being. Uh, like, you know, in the second step in the second page. Here? No, no, second page. You know, this... Yeah. Second, which one? Like, you know, second the... line. Here? Huh. Oh, yeah. Huh? Okay. I mean, if you see the previous equation, uh, first term is d square x alpha by dt square, right? And then there's the second term, minus h alpha 0, comma 0. That doesn't have yes. a dx beta by dt term. No, it won't have. Yeah, in the next step, you have written that it has the term, like the derivative. No, term. here it's not there. Only in this form, it's there, right? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't understand. No, it's in the bracket. So that's the problem. It's in the bracket that multiplies dx beta by dt. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this dx, no, you see, if you look at this term, this thing, then this term does not have dx beta by dt, but this term has. And it is this term which gives me this. And this term, dx by dt is in both of them, right? Am I doing something wrong? Uh, so, you know, the, the ones that are written in green, that doesn't have dx beta by dt, right? Minus h alpha zero comma zero plus half h zero zero alpha comma alpha. Hello. Oh, I didn't get it. See, uh, this is you okay. Yeah. yeah. The term h alpha zero zero came from that gamma alpha zero zero, so it won't have have the uh, that del x beta by del t. No, there's a del x beta by del t outside. Yeah, see, but. If you see, I mean, uh, just look at the last two equations that you uh, These two? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I, okay. Uh, ah! Uh, okay. Five uh, I get your point. I get your point. I get your point. Absolutely, I write. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. And says if you are you know going to neglect you know the terms that have you know comma zero terms, why did we yes. take it all this far? You can just neglect it before only, right? <laughs> okay, okay. I will tell you where you can't neglect it, and that is what will go much later. Now, okay. if suppose you are having weak gravity, but you include time dependence, then what happens? Then you can't. You know, no, can't that understand. is gravitational waves. Oh damn. Which okay. of finite frequency. Okay. Yes. So then, so I just want to bring it to this, just to tell you that when you're doing gravitational waves, then you're having a Newtonian limit as weak gravity, but not static. Okay. So that's where you have gravitational waves. Okay. That's what I wanted. That's why I retained it till this point. Okay. 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 So now in this limit, I have d2 x alpha by dt square plus half x 0 0 alpha. So the point is when you are doing the Newtonian limit, you have to take both the general relativistic limit to Newtonian gravity and the special relativistic limit to Galilean relativity. But when you take the weak gravity limit, but not the Galilean limit, you get gravitational waves in free space. Yeah. Okay. So now these two I'll neglect, but this is what worries me a bit. Let me just see that. So this is equal to H alpha zero comma beta plus H beta zero comma alpha dx beta by dt equal to zero. Now I want to get rid of this just a minute. How do I do that? We'll just check. <laughs> just a minute. I'll check that it's just missing. Well, wouldn't it be minus H beta zero comma alpha? Why? This is okay. This is what is minus now here. Yeah, even in the previous step, like uh, I think that shouldn't be inside the bracket. Minus into minus plus. Which one? Here? No, where? Here? No, the second bracket. This one? No, no. No, no. Okay. This one? Yeah, inside that, like minus H beta 0, comma alpha is what I get. No, you have H alpha 0. So oh. Those terms cancel the same. No, no. no uh, uh, wait a minute. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Hmm. Now. I want to, because I want to make this last term also zero. And I'm just checking how do I do that. I hope I have not goofed up anywhere. I probably have. I just do. Oh, there is one more term I forgot to include. Just a minute. Oh, I forgot to include one more term here. You know which one? No. This I forgot to include. Okay. Okay, both being spatial complex. Yeah. 
special industries. Okay, so I suggest that you just work out the algebra. Basically, what you need to do is the following. I mean, I think I'll also look at it. I mean, there is some stick. So basically, you have to say that H alpha beta comma zero is equal to zero. And H alpha zero by zero equal to zero. H zero beta equal to zero. And uh, I, what we said was H I, we already said that the first order in H. Once I do all this, I should reduce, the equation should reduce to D2X alpha by DT square is equal to minus H H zero zero comma alpha. Okay, just I mean because I think I, we need to I mean something should cancel. See, this is the beta. I don't know how I'm going to cancel this. That's a bit of a dizzy thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will check and let you know. Okay, next uh, day after tomorrow. Okay, so this is the basically the uh, answer you get. All right. Yeah. All right. So and this I did last time. So this can be written as d two v by d t square is equal to half gradient of h zero zero. Right? When I am writing the vector form instead of component form. But I know that d2v by dt square is equal to minus gradient of gravitational potential from Newtonian thing. Okay. Which implies that if this has to boil down to Newtonian thing, I need, uh, I, I want a gradient of H00 by 2. Uh, okay, yeah. So I need um, half gradient of H00 is equal to gradient of phi. Okay. Now what this means is that H00 by 2 equal to phi plus some constant. All right. Yes. Okay. So which means that G00 is equal to 1 plus 2 phi plus 2 kappa. All right? Yes. Yeah. But when phi goes to 0, I want G00 to go Minkowski. So, when phi goes to 0, I want kappa should go to 0. Hence, G00 is equal to 1 plus phi. So, this is the connection for the first time we are getting between geometry and gravity. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so this is a, this is a kind of a landmark thing you know, in the sense that we have been able to, you know, after all this preaching about geometry is gravity, I mean, gravity is geometry, gravity is geometry. One can ask, okay, I mean, can you get some result? This is it, the first one. Okay, fine. Now, I will go to one more thing, some one more property of gamma which will be very useful and I'll just give an example of that also. 
let us consider i i j that is i equate two of the indices of gamma and then yeah two of these indices of gamma and uh, yeah okay so let me just follow what i have written in my notes so that there is no confusion and just call it uh, the same notations i will just use okay what is it equal to this is equal to half g e j a g a comma j plus g sorry g a i comma j I got a i comma j plus g a j comma i minus g i j comma a. All right? Yeah. Okay. Now I will rewrite this as j k j k comma i j i j comma i okay now this is equal to half g j a i will just open it sorry Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Now let me consider this and this. Now here both A and J are dummy indices. So I can shift A to J and J to A in this one. And so I have half G. Say so that's G, uh, half G I A, right? Like in the first term. Yeah. G, half G I A times C bracket. No, no, the first one. Before that. Here. No, the first like, the expansion of gamma I. Before that. This See, one. Before that, before that. Before this? I mean, you know, the previous, the first step. Here. Uh, half G I A, right? Like, is it G, J, I, G, A? No, it'll be J Why? because upper one is J, no? Uh. Upper one is J. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. I thought you wrote gamma I, I, J. No, then I changed it to this one. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't notice it. I, I'm actually sorry. Okay. So, this is half I, so it is A, J, G, J, I, comma, A. Okay, this one. Are you with me? So let me just write it again like this. All right? Yeah. Okay. And now I compare this 
and this cancels. Because G is symmetric. And so I have gamma J I J is equal to half G J A G, I can write it as A J or G A J or G J A whatever. This thing. Okay. Yes. Now, there is a very interesting thing. Now, what is you have G I J G J K is equal to G I K, right? Delta function. That's how we define upper G I J. Yeah. Which means that G I J okay, if uh, if the components of the G lower matrix is G I J then components of G inverse is G I J. That's how the product can become identity delta I K. Okay. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is basically half matrix inverse ij del by del xi of matrix j no i will just call it some b ij sorry Sorry, sorry, sorry. So I write it as half. I have a matrix and I have an inverse. So the JA component of this multiplied by del by del XI, this matrix JA component of this. This is what it is, right? Because G upper A, J A is just the components of the inverse of that matrix. Yeah. Okay. Now there is a theorem. Uh, just a minute. Huh. Now this. Okay. So I'm just doing goofing up. Just one minute. Just one minute. Just one minute. Uh, okay, so suppose I have the um, so if I have a so okay, so if I have a matrix G, okay, uh, which is I K No, I'm sort of, I mean, okay, let me tell you the result what I mean. See, the point is here, what is this object? This object is like a matrix. Now, if I have half M inverse, uh, say, Ka del by del Xi Mja. Okay? Um, since it's a symmetric matrix, I can write it as AG. Is that all right? Suppose I have such a thing. This matrix is G, K, J. You agree with this? Yeah. Okay. So, I equate K and J and I will get this. Yes. Hence, this is nothing else but trace of half 
trace of m inverse del by del x i m matrix. Okay. So I have a matrix M. I take time derivatives. Multi to this I multiply inverse of the M and the trace is nothing else but this. Is this okay? Yeah. And there is a theorem in matrix mechanics that trace of M inverse uh, del by del xk into m is equal to del by del xk times the log of the determinant of m. You can easily see it once you have it diagonal. Okay, but this is a more general thing in matrix mechanics. Are you with me? Yes. I mean, this is a okay. theorem I'm quoting. I'm not proving. Okay. Now, what does this mean? This means something interesting. It means if G is the determinant of the matrix G i j, then this quantity, which is just the trace of this, this quantity gamma uh, j i j is equal to is equal to um, half del by del x i log of g. You get it? Because g is the determinant, the m was the, the same as g matrix, so determinant of m, so this is g. Uh, sorry, could you repeat the last one? This one? Yeah, G is the determinant of the G, matrix. G is case. the determinant of this matrix, right? That I define it like that. Okay. Okay. And so I substitute for determinant M as G. Because this M is nothing else but the G matrix, which I have said. Yeah, understood it. This is there, which means this is equal to del by del x i log of square root of g. Hence, this is equal to 1 by square root of g del by del x i square root of g. Do you get this? Yes. But you know, there's one problem. You know, it is okay when you're working with space. But you're doing space-time, then time and space have different signs. So G is not real, but complex. Right? Yeah. So square root of for example. It is 1 into minus 1 into minus 1 into minus 1 square root, which is square root of minus 1. Right? Yeah, yeah. So there is nothing, no problem here because the same thing here comes here also and it cancel out. But just so that it looks manifestly real, I can always multiply numerator and denominator by i. And I'll write it as 1 by square root of minus g del by del x i square root of minus g. Okay? And so, gamma j i j is equal to 1 by square root of minus g del by del x i square root of minus g. 
This is going to be very important. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, fine. Sir. So let us take this result. Now, let me go to a, again go back to the covariant derivative. Of a contravariant vector. So I have a i semicolon j equal to a i comma j plus gamma i a j a a. Okay. The definition of covariant. Now let me do the following. What is a comma a i comma i? It is the divergence of a because it is del a zero by del x zero plus del a one by del x one and so on. Yeah. You, this is the ordinary divergence. So, suppose I equate i and j. So, I have a i semicolon i is equal to a i comma i plus gamma i a i a a. Now, you realize I have got gamma i i a, something which I was deriving here. This is the covariant divergence. This is the ordinary divergence. This is the covariant, this is the physical divergence. So when I'm having a coordinate system which is not rectilinear, even polar coordinates, then the divergence will be returned. So if suppose you want to do this and you actually calculate divergence in say even polar coordinate system in two dimension, you will find that these divergence formula matches with the ones which are in Griffith backside. So these are the formal ways of getting these divergences in curvilinear coordinate system. And so here I have a semicolon i, a i semicolon i is equal to a i comma i plus 1 by square root of minus g del by del x i square root of minus g into a a. Sorry, this is x a. All right. This is the same formula I have used here. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, I a is a dummy index, so I can write it as a semicolon i is equal to a a i semicolon i is equal to a i comma i plus 1 by square root of minus g del by del x i square root of minus g a i because a is dummy index is equal to 1 by square root of minus g 1 by square root of minus g del a i by del x i plus 1 by square root of minus g del by del x i of root minus g into a i. So, which is equal to 1 by square root of minus g del by del x i square root of minus g a i. Which I can write in a more elegant form as 1 by square root of minus i square root of minus i a i comma i. You get it? Yes. Okay. So this is the covariant, covariant divergence, divergence of a contravariant vector a i. Okay. Now, for example, 
Um, just thinking then if what example can I give? UI UI comma. Hmm. Okay, so let me just give you an example. Let me just jump some things and give it. See, during the workshop, I told you about about uh, expanding universe, right? Okay, so I had said that did I introduce this thing? So I had said that ds square is equal to dt square minus a square of t dx square plus dy square plus dz square. That is, it is something in which there's a three-dimensional space which is homogeneous and isotropic. It is flat. It is Minkowski in some sense. It is not Minkowski. It is Euclidean. But it is Euclidean, but there is an overall expansion going on. So it is not Minkowski. And so the gij for this will be 1 minus a square minus a square minus a square and 0 everywhere. And A is a function of T. Is that okay? Yes. So it yes. means that what is the determinant G? Determinant G or uh, yeah, det means minus determinant G is A cube. Okay? Yes. So if suppose I have a particle which is moving then its four velocity divergence should be equal to 1 by a cube a cube ui comma i okay but if it is a homogeneous universe, there's only a time dependence, there's no space dependence. So this should be nothing else but 1 by a cube of, hmm, am I making sense? Hmm. 1 by a cube of a cube u0 comma 0 plus 1 by a cube a cube u alpha comma alpha. All right? Yes. Yes. Now here, here a is independent of uh, alpha. It is only dependent on time. So this is Nothing but u alpha comma alpha. Whereas here I have u zero comma zero plus u zero. a cube dot by a cube, the time derivative. Okay. Yes. And okay. Now this quantity is dx zero by ds. 3a dot by a okay plus d by I'm just seeing how to get I'm just constructing this example let me see if I can take it to its conclusion
okay then mm, i'm just wondering if i can do it in a slightly different way so divergence okay so let me just uh, do this way so let me just write it this way dxi by ds plus gamma i jk equal to 0 and now I take uh, this thing uh, I equal to j but that won't work okay I will do this and basically I will have to um no i will have to use divergence you, you know basically what i want to do is the following you know in fluids when you have uh, for example com incompressible fluid you have divergence of velocity field is zero now i want to generalize it to a relativistic thing to say that g this is zero and then find out in the order Okay, I'll do it next time. All right, sir. Is it okay? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, now I have to go and sleep. I've been dead tired. Good night. I've been random. Pardon? Yeah. I wanted to ask you about, like, you know, the science day. You know, are you free on science day, like, on the 28th of February? 28th, yeah. Uh, can you please give us a lecture, like, you know, for our club mates, like oh, sure, sure, sure. what time? Uh, anything, any time of yours should work for us. Like it's your convenience. Hey, what are your convenient times? Then I will sort of. Yeah, it's an honesty, so we don't have labs, so everyone will be free. Ah, okay, okay. I will tell you the time. Yeah, sure. But uh, can I take it an S? Like because I need. No, to it's an S. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and you have the you have the proof because it's being recorded. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I thought of telling you not to record this particular thing and then I forgot it. Hey, no, no, come on, come on, come on. I was just joking. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Chalo. Well, let's just... Good night. Bye, 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 bye. bye. Mm. Suresh. Yeah. What will we be following in future lectures? Like content. What will be the content? What will be following? Yeah, content. Pardon? What are the contents we will be following? Like uh, gravitational waves, we will be doing that. Yeah, yeah, but that will take some time for it to come. I have to, after we finish this, then we have to see the change of a vector when I go into a loop. And that is for the first time mm -hmm. I will see, because when I talk about gamma, gamma do still doesn't actually reflect gravity. Because even if when I have an ordinary polar coordinate system, gammas are non-zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so actually what gravity and the signal of gravity actually comes when you take a vector in a loop. You, you are asking not that mm -hmm. if I take another derivative, what happens? Covariant derivative. No, no, I didn't ask that. Remand tension. Ah, so I, 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 I think it, uh, okay. yeah, he was asking. Harish was asking. Okay, okay, okay. So like for example, when I have AI semicolon mm -hmm. j is one then i have a semicolon k because aij is a tensor so i can always take mm -hmm. a covariant derivative of tensor so i have an a i semicolon j semicolon k minus a i semicolon k semicolon j. That is, I am reverse the order. Mm -hmm. If it is a partial yeah. derivative, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. But if it is covariant derivative and it is a non-flat space-time, then yeah, this will not cancel. And this mm -hmm. quantity will be, I think, equal to something like R, I, J, K, L, a L or something like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This no, one. No, I was just asking that. 
No, no, I'm just telling you. So this quantity is called the Riemann-Christoffel uh, tensor and this is what encodes gravity. So this mm -hmm. is the first thing we will do now after that. Yeah, I was thinking that I will I have done this in course. So I was thinking that I will skip this part and yeah, that's okay. The, that's the, okay. The, yeah, yeah. No, but basically I will try to highlight a few physical intu physically intuitive things about this. The relationship between Riemann Christopher tensor and the electromagnetic field tensor. You see, because there okay. are some very really interesting this one, you know, uh, the AI is <laughs> like GIG. I mean, in electromagnetic thing, then you have uh, okay, so then you have um, okay, so then you have FIJ and this is <laughs> like RIJKL. See, this is a single uh, index, this is a double index. So two index thing goes to four index. Yeah. So these are some interesting parallels which you can draw. So I might like to touch upon this. So I will do okay, this okay. and then I will go over to some aspects of the problem in defining distances in time in time in time dependent space times. And then I think I will go over to the uh, application part of uh, spherically symmetric solution, which is a black hole. And then I will go oh. to cosmology and then I will go to gravitational waves. That's far away. So basically you will be doing cosmology also? Some basic cosmology. Okay, okay, okay. And like where does differential geometry exactly come into the picture? Oh, you see, the point is in all this, when I'm doing this formalism, I've already chosen a coordinate system when I say DXI, right? Yeah. Some of the purest mathematicians will say that I the whole formalism should be explicitly coordinate independent. And they use some other technique, differential geometry. So I don't get into that. My, my philosophy is simple. My philosophy is, look, I do physics for explaining measurements of observations and to make any measurement of observation i have to choose a coordinate system so i'm perfectly fine choosing one coordinate system keeping in mind what is coordinate invariant what are the objects okay but at the end the rivers you know cross each other right like Pardon? You know, the rivers cross each other right we, we get the same results as they get yeah yeah, yeah that is true but the differential geometry <coughs> whole language has to be learned then Oh. Manifold, differential manifold, diffeomorphism, all these things. I don't know. That get very confused. I've attempted several times to read it, then I never got interested. Because at the end of it, I was always, uh, you know, I will keep doing it at some point when it gets sufficiently complicated. I said that, forget it, you know, anyway, to do a measurement, I would choose a coordinate system. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think it's a difference between a physics-oriented person doing GTR and a maths-oriented person GTR doing GTR. I also once attended that thing and it was like in physics, like uh, we find GIJ upper index and lower indices in simple way. But it was too much complicated in that way. Like it will take whole one, two pages to just do that. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, because that's worst a, thing. you see the point is, <laughs> you know, it is, you know, it, 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 I'll tell you, that is useful when you want to prove some general theorems in, uh, you know, in general space times. Mm -hmm. That is when it is useful, but that is not what I will be trying to do. Yes, I have just one question, okay? Like, why, we know that uh, that uh, this uh, Christoffel symbol is not tensor, isn't it? Yes. But uh, we use that metric to lower and raise the indices. No, 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 no. So it's like... I am just... Oh, okay, okay. You see... That part, yeah. Low, you see, lower and... You see, it is just that. I mean, uh, I know what you mean. I am saying that... I mean, this quantity, uh, G, I, K, I, A, B. This is some animal, which is K, A, B. But this is not a tensor. I'm not showing tensor. 
I'm just saying that I'm keeping a bookkeeping of the indices. I'm not claiming this is a tensor. See, just because I lower and raise and lower, it's a shortcut way of writing it. That's all. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And one another thing like uh, that Cornica delta. Yes. That, uh, Cornica delta is tensor or not? Only mixed part is tensor, isn't it? Ah, this is one thing, you know. You see, G I J, G J K is G I K, and this is G I K. This is a tensor, this is a tensor, so this is a tensor. This is not a tensor. Yeah. I mean, in uh, you know, there like is no endless faculty yeah. in our department. Yeah, people give the argument that if one family, one member is a, a tensor, then whole family will be tensor because you can lower and raise the indices by yes. using metric. Because you are going to lower it using another tensor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if suppose M I K is a tensor, I lower it with K J, it will be a tensor. Okay. Do you know why people reading general relativity are very stressed? Why? <laughs> because they get tensor and tensor. <laughs> okay. 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 Sure. Okay. Good night. Huh? Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Bye, sis. Good night. Good night. Bye, sis. Good night, sis. Good night, good night. Yeah.